Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. As promised, I'm gonna show you how I make my blueberry jam. It is so easy, 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 easy. I do not bother buying fresh blueberries because if I wanna make it over the winter, the prices are crazy. So I use frozen blueberries, guys. Here we are, I've got a pot on my stove. And I'm going to add as many blueberries as I want. There's a trick. There's no measuring over here, guys. Okay. Might as well do whatever's left of this. Okay. So you look at how many blueberries you have. And to this, we're going to first add some lime or lemon, whatever you prefer. I have lots of lime on hand, so that's what I'm going to use. So there is my lime. I've got half year. We're going to cut another half a lime. That makes a full lime that I'm using. Okay. I try to get all of it. Very easy, guys. So we start off with the lime and now before you put any sugar, we're going to put some water, but we don't want to see the water. We want it to be under the berries. So it doesn't matter how many berries you have. As long as when you put the water, it doesn't come over the berries. There you go. You can see there's water there, but it hasn't come up over the berries. Okay. And they're frozen. So they're going to make some extra water as it is. Now sugar, however amount of sugar you like. If you want it very sweet, you put like a whole cup of sugar. If you want it less sweet, you put less sugar. So I'm going to use about maybe about half a cup for now and then I'll taste it. And ours is, by the way, vegan white sugar here where we are. And we're going to add a little bit of salt. You know what they say about salt? Salt and sugar makes everything taste more enhanced. So um, salt, it's up to you. Sometimes I like to taste the salt and then when you add the sweetness, you get that salt and sweetness. You know like when you get the salt, uh, those pretzels that are half salty, half sweet. I love my food that way. So that's up to you though. So I'm going to put three pinches of Beautiful gray salt. By the way, if you don't know about gray salt, uh, it's one of the best salts to have because all the minerals are still intact. It hasn't been bleached. Now I'm going to start my burner and I'm going to start it on kind of high-ish. And then I'm going to taste it right away before the salt, just as soon as I stir it. It'll tell me if I need to add a little extra salt, uh, not salt, sugar or even salt. And from there, it'll tell me if I have to add a little more of either. And right now, because they're frozen, I could hardly mix them. But if you put too much water, then all you have to do is you have to, you have to boil it longer. But if you boil it longer, what happens is it starts giving that burnt taste to your, um, to your jam. So you don't want to do that. So I put just enough water that it goes under the berries. But if I see uh, that it still could use a little bit of water, then it's not a problem. I will add it. There's no recipes here, guys. It's just a matter of knowing your food, loving your food, and knowing that you're going to get this right because you will get this right. You can't make a mistake with this. Okay, water looks good because when those berries start to defrost and you start cooking them, it's going to make a little extra water. But as you can see, now the water has come up a little more. And that's it. That's how easy this is, guys. Now we're going to cook it till it becomes jam. Now blueberries is one fruit that has so much pectin in it that you really don't need to add anything else to this. Just taste it. I could use a little extra sugar. Just a bit, not too much, because I love the taste of blueberries. Blueberries. 
but remember you're making the jam if you want to make it very sweet you just add more and my last ingredient guys and this is just going to add a little extra protein can you tell what that is it's chia seeds so if you do have too much liquids i might add just a little extra liquid but if you do have too much liquids those chia seeds are going to suck up some liquids and get nice and plump and just add a little extra nutrients to your uh, to your jam and you won't even see it or taste it in there just taste mm, maybe a little more sugar i had more berries than than a cup Just remember, sugar is how much you want in there. Taste it, and you judge. Mm, so good. You judge how much you want. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not even using a measuring cup. These are, by the way, they're not regular blueberries. They're the wild blueberries. So the flavors are even a little more intense. And that's it. Now you're going to bring this to a boil. And after it's come to a boil, I better not put it there or it's going to drip on the side. After it comes to a boil, you want to lower it and you want to just kind of like a light simmer until it starts getting thicker on you. And it won't take long for it to get thick. So have some patience and you're going to have delicious fresh blueberry jam for your family in no time at all. Okay, as you can see, um, sorry I didn't have my mic on. Uh, I did add a little bit of chia seeds and that's going to also absorb some water and give you extra nutrients. I also add a little extra sugar. Remember it's your jam, you taste it. If you want it sweeter, just add a little extra sugar. If you want it less sweet, uh, don't add as much. But you know, this you customize it to your taste. And before you know it, you're going to have delicious jam for your family. We start off, here we go, it's coming to a boil. We are going to lower that heat and we're going to slowly let it simmer and once in a while you're going to check it. You don't want to overcook this. You want to get it to the point that when you dip your wooden spoon in and you pick it up, it sticks to your spoon. Right now nothing sticks. It's like dipping your spoon in water. So you're going to know when your jam is ready. I'll show you later the spoon method, how you know if your jam is ready. Okay, as you can see, there's a nice boil, yet I put my stove on a lowish heat. I have it on number two, and that's pretty low, yet it's still boiling. So we're going to let it do its thing, and if you see it's coming up too fast, then all you have to do is just lower it a little more, and that's it. You don't even have to stand here. Once in a while, come and check it. But it should be ready like in about 20 minutes for sure. Don't even over mix it. If you over mix it, you're going to end up breaking your berries. Just kind of use your spoon to sway. Just make like little S's, little snake patterns. Okay, so we're going to let that cook. And you could do this with any fruit. Now some fruit, you might have to add some pectin. And a cheap way of adding pectin, guys, is by adding apples. Apples has a lot of pectin. Or you can make a mix of fruit. You can make a mix of berries. It depends what you buy at the grocery store. Uh, and I say buy frozen because you know what? It never goes bad. It stays in your freezer. You can use it for smoothies. You can use it uh, for other things. And you can use it to make jam. So it's a win-win situation for me, right? And if I come along in the summer and I see a basket of strawberries or a big basket of raspberries. Well, of course I'm going to use fresh berries. Yes, it's the summer. It's the peak time to buy the berries, especially coming from Canada. So I will also make jams out of, uh, out of fresh berries. But right now we're hitting uh, the winter. We're in December, not we're hitting, we are in the, we are in the winter, right, Erica? And uh, the best thing for me is not to spend crazy amount of money buying fresh berries. 
I'm just going to get a big old bag of frozen berries or frozen fruit and then you make a delicious jam, fresh jam. Trust me, there's a big difference. If you ask Erica, do you prefer homemade blueberry jam or do you prefer the one that comes out of a jar from the store? Uh, she'll tell you the homemade. We were at the country, when was it, a few weeks back and we had no more jam. So my husband knows that Erica's is a blueberry jam fanatic comes back he goes look I got you a nice bottle of a nice jar of blueberry jam so she sat down to have her toast that morning and she says no this is not your jam you cannot compare the jam you make yourself and the one that you buy and the trick is not to flood your berries if you flood your look at all the water it made I could have even used less water but look at all the water it's made for you it's like crazy the amount of water that these berries make. Okay, so I'm going to let this cook and then I'm going to show you. I'm going to put a timer so this way I have an idea. I'm going to put a timer for 15 minutes and then I'm going to come and check it. And I'm going to show you the difference of my spoon now, which is basically water, and what it's going to look like. A little later. Another way to see if your fruit has pectin is if you move your your liquid back and forth you'll see it almost has like a little jelly, almost like a, you know how jello is when you touch jello, it kind of does a little jig. Well, if you go back and forth in here, you can see there's almost like a little jig, like it wants to move, but something is holding it back. So that's how you know you have pectin in your fruit. Some fruit, you might have to either add apples or if you want to go out and buy pectin, you could do it that way. I prefer to do it the natural way. So you could even add apples to this. It's very good. If you take, um, Erica, do you want apples in this one? Or do you want just blueberries? Doesn't matter. You've eh? done it with apples. But it's up to you. You want it with apples? They both taste good. Yeah. So you want to give me an apple? Uh, we're going to add an apple in this one. But just to show you that it's so versatile, you could do whatever you want with your with your jam. I am not going to put the skin of the apple. I'm going to use um, a honey crisp. But since I'm doing blueberries, I will cut it in small pieces. The apples, by adding this apple, basically I am adding extra pectin and I'll get extra jam out of it. Look how small I cut the pieces. I cut them very small, like a little incy bitsy bite. There we go. Okay, here we go. As you can see, it's getting nice and thick. I hope I make it in time. If not, it's going to cook with the heat anyhow. And you want to be able to, I almost have this apple down here. You want to be able to jar these when it's super, super hot. This way you get a great seal and your jam's going to last a long time and you don't even have to refrigerate it, but your, your jar has to get sealed. And the only way your jar is going to get sealed is if you put it in when it's super, super hot. Okay, so here is, like I've got six minutes out of that timer. And you can see the jam is getting nice and thick. Okay, mix this in. And what that apple is going to do is not only add more pectin, but it's also going to give us a little extra, a little extra jam. So it's a win-win situation. Notice that jelly when I move the And you could also tell that when I lift up my spoon, it's a little more glycery. That means that 
it's starting to thicken up. We're going to need more than 15 minutes already. 15 minutes is 10 minutes has gone by. So I'm sure we're going to need a little extra time. Longer than 15 minutes to make it, but worth everything. All right, we have two minutes left here. I am going to put the timer on again for another maybe 10 minutes and give that a check. So that basically would be 15 plus another 10 and see where that takes us. If we need longer, we need longer. But if you put a timer, that's, I work with a timer guys around my house. My stove timer is always ringing. My husband's telling me, what's it ringing for Connie? Because I know that if I've got something uh, on the stove and I've got to run down the basement and sometimes when I'm down in the basement, I'm doing maybe throwing in some laundry and the next thing you know is like, oh, there's a cat litter, I need to go clean. So I start cleaning that and then I go back and maybe start folding clothes and I forget I have stuff on the stove. So by doing the timer, I hear it, it's like, oh yeah, I've got something on the stove. So I always put a timer for everything. It just reminds me, uh, just makes me a little more alert. Okay, another good tip is by keeping your spoon on a plate and you're going to start seeing when it cools off, if it's still watery, you're moving it over and it's watery, you know your jam is not ready. But if you lay your spoon after you gave it a good mix and a few seconds later it starts to set, you know your jam is going to be ready in no time at all. It's starting to become like a jelly belly. And there's, see, still liquid. If I'm moving it around. So yeah, I never really time myself. So I'm, when I make a video, guys, I either time myself or I measure it for you. The things that I don't measure, like when I showed you how I add sugar and water to this jam, that's because it's just a good tip, something that you can try. Uh, so you can say, you know what, I have some berries. Let me make some berries. Oh, Connie said, you know, don't get the water over the berries. Keep the water under the berries because the w berries are going to make a lot of water. Um, I've even done it where I just add sugar to the frozen berries and the berries start making its own water when they're frozen. And then the sugar and that jam does really, it, it really fast. But it becomes a little too thick for me. This way I get more more jam for my uh, for my buck. Unfortunately, you don't get a lot of jam. You get one jar and maybe a bit in another little jar. When I say jar, we're talking little jars. I'm using one of these tiny little jars. So I'm gonna get one and maybe a half. Okay, if you're gonna stand next to your stove, you could even bring up your heat so it could go a little faster for you. Okay, so my 10 minutes has gone by, so that was 15 plus 10. I'm going to put um, another 10. So that would be like 25 minutes that this has been going. Keep a little bit of that liquid on the spoon. Just kind of wave it around and then flip it over and watch it drop. You can see that it's still dropping, but it's dropping slower. And we could also put a little bit on my plate just to see what it does. We're going to check it in a bit and see if it's set or if it's still running. So good. Sweet but not sweet. Hard to describe that. See the jelly belly? When you move it back and forth, it's got that jelly belly. But it's almost done. And remember, when you're doing it at home, you don't have to do it like me where I'm trying to explain this so I'm standing next to the stove. Just put that timer. Put the timer, uh, go do a bed. You're going to hear it. Make sure that your, uh, your stove is on low. Do, you finish doing the bed, come and check it. Give it a stir, light stir, like a little S. 
and then put the timer for another 10 minutes if your timer is done and then just go do something else. Come back, check it. When it's ready, make sure you put, those in the, uh, put that jam in the jar, seal it, and just leave them covered with a cloth until they cool off on their own. And only then can you store it. Because if that lid doesn't kind of sunk in, I'll give you an example. When you're using any jar, uh, right now, see that sound? That means there's lots of air in there. But when I put something really hot, it seems to suck this lid in, and then you can't do that anymore. It just stays in. There's no way. You won't hear that click clack. Then you know that you have a good seal. But you make sure it's nice and cool before you do anything, before you put anything away. Just jack up my heat a bit. I have it at number four, and I still have five minutes. So what did we do? 15, 10, and 10? We might even need a little longer. And at this point, you don't even see the apples anymore. You can't tell where the apples are. You can't tell where the chia seeds are. There's just so many ways you can add extra protein to your food. Chia seed is one of them. Very good for us. You could also add chia seed in water and just drink your water with the chia seeds, it hydrates you, it keeps you more hydrated, especially if we're going for long hikes. We have the chia seeds in, uh, chia seeds in our water. The chia seeds get like little fat bellies that hold all the water. When we go hiking, we drink our water with the chia seeds and it just holds that little extra moisture, a uh, little extra water in our system so we don't get as dehydrated. There's so many things you can do. Erica, how is it for sweetness? You wanna try it? Do you want a little extra sugar? Okay, so that's the trick when you're using the spoon method. Just swirl it, and then you tip it over and check to see your droplets. As you could tell, the droplet is forming at the bottom, but it's not coming off as easy. You wanna run your finger on that? So pretty, the color. It is. Mm, very good. Is it okay in uh, sweetness? Yeah, perfect. And that's a good way to control your sugar intake, right? The ones you buy at the store are so sweet. I find them way too sweet. So, yeah, we might be able to put this another maybe five, ten minutes. Just take some, put it over here, and see what it does. Okay, notice how thick it's getting. I will let it go just a little longer. I'm going to put a five-minute timer here and see. Start. Okay, so just put timers for yourself, and just this way you don't overcook it or you don't undercook it. Maybe even longer than five minutes. I'll put a 10 minute timer. There we go, I'm gonna do a 10 minute timer. It's getting there. But oh my God, does it taste good. I got it. Okay, this is something else you can do and it doesn't matter when you put it in. Uh, I use one of these little tools and you can just kind of scrape some of that. That lime skin. Right into it, not a lot, just a little. It just adds just that little extra zip to it. Now, if I was using a full lime, it would be a lot easier. Mm, I love lime. I love the smell of it. I love the taste of it. If I can bottle it and wear it, I would. Oh, I just love it. Okay, so we're going to let it cook for the rest of the time. Remember, it's your jam. You want a more watery, 
Uh, if you make it more watery, you can use this on pancakes. It'll last a long time. So it's up to you what you want to do with it. Once it's a jam, you don't want to put that on ice cream. It's like putting a blob on ice cream. But when it's a little more runny, it's a perfect time to bottle it if you're going to use it to put it on um, pancakes and ice cream for sure. So good. So you know this is done. It's like hot lava right now. <laughs> but your jam is done. At this point, it's, it's done. Yeah. Okay, guys. I am going to still... Leave it on the burner, but turn it off. And if you see now, everything is, it just sticks. You know, it's done. go okay nice and hot we want to seal that and off to the side we're going to do the same thing here there we go and seal it we're going to cover these Thank you. Put this on the side. I want to use my spatula. This way I get it all. And that's how easy it is to make my blueberry jam. If you make this now, you'll have it ready for Christmas morning. Boom. My God, it's good. So good. Especially with that little bit of lime. It's delicious. So there it is, guys. I actually got a little more because I put the apple in. I got two small jars. And I got a little ramekin that we could munch on today with uh, whatever. Put it on some bread. A piece of naan bread. Um, I got to even make some cheese. Erica's bugging me to make uh, some cranberry cheese. So I got to make some of that. If you guys want to know, there's recipes all over. Just Google my name, Connie's Ross and Kitchen Cheese. They'll come up for you. There's so many cheeses you can make. But I promised her I was going to make some cheese because we ran out of cheese. We've been buying cheese. But sometimes you have no choice, right? There we go. I'm going to cover this with a cloth. And guess what, guys? We're going to have delicious jams for a couple of weeks, if not even longer. And uh, it took me no time at all to make this. So I'm going to say thank you for coming by. Thank you for having the patience and listening to me. I could be a little long with my videos, but I want to try and get all the information that I think is important to make a successful dish or whatever I'm showing you. So I'm going to say, don't forget, always put some love and compassion in your food. Leave those animals off your plates. When you do so, everything's going to taste delicious. You're not going to miss anything when it comes to flavors and food. And I'm going to say I love you. And I'm going to say thank you for always dropping by. And I'm going to see you in my next video, guys. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.